morning, everybody, and welcome back to Money in the Law, My FM 101.3. Uh, HCAT, House and Cable yes. Access Television. Uh, we are joined by our, uh, our illustrious HCAT executive producer, Tom Harmon, and of course, your host today. Uh, I'm John Drohan from Manifor Financial and Mr. Jay Marston. Good morning. Yep, former, uh, former exalted leader of Holliston. Now he is the <laughs> exalted leader of yes. the Marston Law Empire that he is. Uh, this, and it is, it, it's, a, it's actually just making its way like across the country. International headquarters right and, here in Hollister, Massachusetts. Which and is, from there, we just go global. That's right. You, yep. and, and you've been on this global outreach program now for, it's going on, it's going on at least, how long have you been in business now? Uh, I have solo? been, I've been solo for, I went solo in 2010. So I went on solo, this so, is going into my 14th year. Wow. I mean, it seems just like yesterday. Well, you know, I, we, we've <laughs> talked about this on the show before, I'm, I'm sure. I, I still can remember, like it was yesterday, Yepper. rolling into Citizens Bank and, uh, and opening up a law firm for my, uh, opening up a bank account for my law firm. <laughs> opening up a law opening firm up a law for firm. my bank. I'd already yeah, opened that, a law firm yeah. online, basically, <laughs> with the Secretary of State's office. Yeah. And then I remember rolling into the Citizens Bank at the old Stop and Shop location on East Main Street over in, uh, at, uh, Citizens, uh, at, in Milford. And I'll never forget, never forget, walking out of the building with an envelope under my arm and a you know stack of free uh, temporary business checks and, uh, and, and you a had bank some broccoli number. too right because it was nope, in that stop nope, and shop right nope, there yeah, no nope, no nope, no nope. it was all about it was all you about the law firm those pork chops with you <laughs> dropped a hundred bucks in the bank account and said uh, guess what this you're live <laughs> you're live that was it right there that's 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 the very inauspicious beginnings I, of of Mars and Law fourteen it, years ago it's funny the last time I saw you was uh, in. Outside of Citizens Bank. In the other Citizens Bank. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Putting well, right. in my second $100. It's right. been a tough 14 years. That's yeah, right. We're still, that's right. We're still right. We're still doing it. We're, we're still, still chipping doing away. It. Yeah. We're still chipping we're away. We're still doing it. We're going to turn a corner. We I can feel it. hundred bucks in there. I can feel it. I can feel it. It's been a tough, tough, I, I, tough. Re- I, I always use your line as one of the classic Jay Marsden lines. And there have been plenty of them over the years. But my favorite line of yours is you're like, yep, so uh, once I went on my own, there, there I am. I'm flying without a net, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Flying without a net line is the classic. Jay Marsden's like, yeah, so, uh, okay, honey, um, you're not going to work. I'm going to leave this cushy lawyer gig where I just have to I have to do a little commuting down to Winchester. Yeah, it's not that bad, right? It's easy get, drive. You get used to it. Easy I'm, drive. I'm going against the grain, yeah, right? Yeah, what's and, my, I'm back in 128 yeah, And I'm yep. going to start my own law firm out of the house. We'll start there, right? Out of the basement. Yeah, yeah yep. we'll yep. start yep. right there. On a card table. I mean, it's a card table. Yep, I had a card I table. I had a laptop. Card table, a laptop, and the laptop didn't have Microsoft Office on it, yeah. much to my dismay, because you tend to use <laughs> Who needs it? You, you use Word a lot when you're drafting documents. Uh, that was a little, that was the that was the gift it kept on giving from my previous employer, the small mutual fund company in town. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, y- y- yeah, look, I mean, I, I I look fondly, I look back fondly on uh, on those uh, those humble humble beginnings. Because, you know, we, we've talked to people, friends of ours who have talked about going out on their own, who want to go out on their own. And, you know, people don't see that. No. People don't see what your day one was like, right? I mean, my day one was I had no clients. I had no job. My wife wasn't working. And the way I introduced her to the idea Two of young this, children. Two, yeah, two young mm-hmm. kids, a mortgage. A dog. The way, the way I introduced... Yep. Um, yeah, we did have the dog. Yeah. We did have the dog. We bought the dog when I left my other firm. And that was the first, first question out of the kid's... They were like, so you're not working anymore? We're still getting the dog, right? right. <laughs> That's all I cared about, right? That's all I cared about, right? He was a good dog, too. Great dog. Oh, he was he a great was a dog. dog. But, you know, those, those beginnings, you know, those are, that's, everyone has an origin story, right? Yep. I mean, you probably remember the first account you ever opened. You probably remember all of those things, right? Oh, yeah. When you first oh, went yeah. out and hung it your was, shingle. It was all, it, it was one of those things where, you know, again, working out of the house. Yeah. Although, although what I did, which was actually really cool, and I, which I thought was really cool, is I was, you know, they had those, uh, and I think they still have them, those postal centers, right? Oh, like, yeah. Where you could get a post office box. Yeah. So although I was working out of the house, I had what seemed like a suite. You know, oh, so if you want to do, uh, if you want to do a send anything, send it to, oh. uh, you know, 20, 205 millisecond. Unit, road. unit seven. <laughs> yep. 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 Suite yep. six. Yep. Yeah. That's right. And that's, that's how we, so, so I would, you know, again, on paper and, you know, kind of to the general public, it looked like, a, oh, you must have a really wow, nice office. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you pop on. And by and say hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, don't do that. Having, don't do that. Yeah, you, I mean, you could drop your mail. You could, you know, wrap up a package if yeah. you did. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. That's that's right. Buy some was. stamps if you need to do that's that. What it was. It's uh, the postal center. So yeah, you're right. It's there's the 
there's that beginning, there's that, you know, there's that kind of, and, and it's the decision, right? You make that decision, like, you know what, you know, you kind of, you know, you add up all the numbers, you do all the research and, you know, it's like, okay, what am I doing? Am I going to, is now's the time I'm going to jump in the deep end of the pool? Yeah, and, or you don't do any of that. Or you come home and you say to your wife, I have good news and bad news. Yeah. Good news is I have unlimited vacation time yeah. <laughs> due to a disagreement at my previous employer. What, did you just say previous employer? Yeah. Oh, that's part or two my of old the story. Job. That's yeah. the part two of the story. Yep, here we are. Yep, here we are. And uh, so, so yeah, so part of it, and I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about kind of the, you know, kind of how, you know, you know, from, you know, because you and I are essentially entrepreneurs in the sure. sense that we've Small started, owner. Yep. We, we've started our own businesses, and you know, both different but similar in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of people out there that do that. There's a lot of people that, you know, they always want to. I want to start my own business. I want to do this. I want to. I want to be in business for myself. And there are, and you know, make no mistake about it. There are plenty of benefits, and there are plenty of great things that come from from owning your own business, as you can attest to and we'll, we can discuss. But there are also a lot of harder things, too. There are a lot oh, of things, oh, there yes. are a lot of things yes, that, you know, that, that, that are challenges that you don't otherwise, you know. And the, the people who have done it, they get it. The people who haven't done it, they, they it, you know, it's almost like one of those things. It's like you don't know. It's like when, you're, when your kids leave home for college, you know, you try and tell people, this is what it's going to be like. Or, sure. or when you have a kid, right? When you, you tell people that are, that are pregnant, you say, wait till you have a kid. Everything's going to change. You can talk to your blue in the face, but... They know when they're when it happens, right, right? right? And same thing when your kids leave for college, you you don't really know what it's like until it happens to you and you actually feel it. And that's not unlike when you you know when you start your own business and you start to be like, wow, this is great. I I I make my own schedule. I'm my own boss. No one's telling me what to do. And then on the other hand, it's like, no one's telling me what to do. I got to do something. Right, and I, and then right. you know you make that list. Of well, the other piece of that too is depending on you know if you have a friend. Or a colleague, or, or a relative, who you know, if you didn't grow up in that entrepreneurial space, and you don't know anybody who who lives in that world, you may not realize, you know, that you you may not be given any insight as to how difficult are the challenges that you have to overcome to kind of get through all that. And you got to find somebody who's willing to be honest, right? right, and say, hey, look, you know, yes, everything looks wonderful. 14 years later, if you will, and, and, and you hope that that continues to, knock on wood, you hope that that continues to happen. I don't even know if that was wood. I think it was wood. Glass. Yeah. But, but, but the challenge is, you know, somebody has to come to you and be honest and say, look, let me tell you what you're in for, right? There's good and there's bad, to your point. There's yeah. great, pros and cons to everything, and, and you've got to be up to the task because if you're not, it can get messy. And it can get messy fast. Well, you know, and back to the Jay Marsden um, euphemism of flying without a net. Yeah, uh, you are truly flying without a net. And and you know, you know, with all the you know, and we can go into some of the, like you know some of the nuance, some of the details of it of of kind of when you start your own business or or or, or, or you know involved in any kind of like beginning of something. You know, you're always going to need. You're always going to need more than what you think you need, right? Sure. And starting with money, right? Money is kind of like the thing where everybody's like, "Well, yeah, I have enough money, and I, and and if this happens, I'll be able to manage this." There are going to be there are going to be things that you don't see coming, and you bring up a great point about having some kind of a mentor or somebody who oh, can like absolutely. who can say who can say, "All right, you know." You're in a great spot. You're in a great space. There, this can work for all the right reasons. But here are the things that you need to look out for. Here yep. are the things that you need to like. When you think you have enough money, you don't because right. because there's going to be something that happens, or there's going to be an opportunity. Right? There's going to be an opportunity where you can invest in something. You can invest in yourself or invest in your business that will enable you to get to you know to get to that place where you know that that next step or that step where you really can launch or you really establish yourself or in like in the case of us it could enable us to get that first really good client or that first really good case yeah. that that kind of gets you gets you started or maybe get you some notoriety or get you some you know where you're like wow that you know you get people see you they say hey, that lawyer did a really good job with that uh, you know I really like the way you're estate plan who's your attorney oh my attorney is Jay Marston and they're right. like that no, <laughs> well, but 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 the idea is you, you at some point you decide as you grow, you know, are, are you the are you the individual? Do you have a practice? Are you going to be the you know chief cook and bottle washer, or are you looking to grow your firm? Like what's what's the plan? What are we trying to do? What's the what's the objective? And and that's those are different mindsets. Those are different those are different paths. You know, and there's you know we we 
we uh, we ref we j not jokingly because it's true. We refer to it as you know you can have a lifestyle firm, mm -hmm. right? Or you can say, look, I'm I'm really trying to grow this thing and turn this thing into something that long outlives me. You know, those are those are potentially different approaches. They come with different challenges. They come with different issues. They come with different benefits. They come with different uh, you know, negative consequences. And there's there's a whole bunch of different ways to look at those two or you know just, I'm sure there's more but but those no, two those two you approaches <laughs> right there that's it right there that's, that's all it. Well, that's all, all or nothing yeah yep. I'm, I'm I'm living a cushy life or I'm or I'm going public I'm right? grinding yeah. it up grinding yeah. it up yeah. yep that's right but, and and there's and and this could be one of those things where you know de again depending upon what business you're in so sure. so we're kind of looking we're, we're talking about you know the businesses that we're familiar with but think of anything right you want to start a restaurant right you want to you want to own a restaurant you're like am I I'm a I'm a really good chef and I want to. I want to start my own. Re I want to own a restaurant, right. and I want to make right. my own food. I want, and and I'm passionate about. It. I love it. I love cooking. I love. I've worked in restaurants before. Yeah. I know. I've I've learned things. I've seen things that I like. I've worked under some really some awesome chefs, and I think I am ready to do this. So you know, if I'm gonna, and I'm going to start my own restaurant now. All of the things that you know that you're talking about, like there's you know, do I do I want to how how much you know. With any business, you have to make money, right? You have to. It has to be sure. a viable business, unless you're going to run a not-for-profit, or unless you have all the money in the world and you don't care to make money. Right. But most businesses, I need to make money, right? Yeah. So, in the restaurant business, I, I I need to I need to have a profit, and then I have to deal with all of the things in the restaurant. You know, all well, of those you, you costs. Need, you need to run a business. I mean, yes, you're running a restaurant, mm -hmm. but you need to run a business. Doesn't and matter if, what it is. And right? If your expertise is in the Back of the house, making the food and getting all that stuff, that's one part of your business. But then there's a whole other part of your business that is the businessy type sure. stuff of the restaurant that has nothing to do with food, right? Yeah. It's do we lease equipment? Do we buy equipment? It's where do we lease our where do we lease our place? Do we do the build out? Does the landlord do the build out? Are we gonna buy a building? Are we gonna buy I mean, buy into an existing restaurant and transition it into our new place? You know, there's so many other decisions that have nothing to do with the food component of it. And and you have to figure out well what part of the business do I like? You know, if I really like the food part of it, how do I handle the businessy type of the job that I don't really necessarily love, but still has to get done? It's critical to my success. Has to get done, and maybe I have to do it. Maybe yep. I don't have the the money, I don't have the funds, I don't have the wherewithal, I don't have the personnel that can do that for me. So I have to do it. And right. and guess what? If you're in the, if you're in a business and you're flying without a net, then you better learn. You're going to learn quickly on how to do it oh, yeah. or how not to do it. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We're going to talk about. I, I like this. On the, it's the it's kind of the road to entrepreneurship, the pluses and the minuses, uh, and also talking about um, some what, one of the other nuances, one of the other other businesses, business models that are kind of like the they're kind of like the thing now. And uh, and I wanted to. This is what I, I, I want to get to is kind of how these these businesses how these businesses kind of make money just perpetually. And, and and getting yourself if you're if you're in that in that in that space where you can ge have a business that generates income and generates money kind of ongoing without you having to do a lot of extra heavy lifting free money is that what it's I not heard? free money no no Sounds no no like you're no no you're like, you're right, working well, for it all right we'll, but, we'll correct but that but it, we'll but it comes that. in all right we'll uh, we'll talk about that when we're when we after come the break right actually right back all, all right. right we'll be right back. And we're back. Money in the Law, My FM 101.3. Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, main after financial. Tom, behind the wheel, steering well, us through well, the cosmos. We had an incident. We had an incident. break. Off mic incident. Off well, mic incident. So Tom, as, as for many of you know, uh, Tom, is, uh, Tom Harmon's our, our, he's our new executive producer. So Tom comes and he is our money in the law guy, replacing some of the guys I don't even remember their names. And he is, by the way, he is unaffected by our star power. Uh, and, unaffected by Which it. is good. Which, which we is, need. We need <laughs> that. We need somebody to keep us well, on the straight I mean, everybody needs it, right? You think about it. You think, I mean, does Tom Brady need everybody gushing over? Like, no. Oh, Tom, great Tom. Somebody to say, you know yeah. what, Tom? You're not really putting that. You're not yeah. putting in the reps, Tom. Right? And, and and we and we had that just now in yeah. the break where uh, where Tom, our Tom, had to say to J RJ. I think the word is woodshed. He took me out to the woodshed about the way I was handling yeah, he my was, microphone. He was lucky he didn't he didn't fix that microphone himself. Yeah, he well, was about that, to. He was yeah. yeah. That was like I thought he was going to fix my lapel, yeah. and it was more like I grabbed the lapels and say. Let's fix this right now, and let's get. This I don't think we out. got that on TV, but Tom actually put his his hand around Jay's throat and said, "I just got to fix yep. this for you." Yeah. This is bugging me. This yeah. is bugging what it's you said. Bugging me. So yeah. here we are. It sounds better. I'm so sure it's, it's okay. Great. So so and and everything was fine. Jay was a little rattled, but you know, <laughs> Tom was 
Tom said, you know, don't let this happen again. A, and Jay he, said, okay. True professional. He's a true t- professional. A true, true professional. professional. And the other thing that we noticed about Tom is Tom is, uh, I, I think Tom is a scratch golfer. I think he's, oh, right. he's that guy. Yeah. All right. And, and, it, you know, maybe he was the giveaway that every time I see him, he's wearing some form of a golf hat or golf nice. attire. Nice. All right. So, yeah, I think he's a ringer. I think he's, I think he's like that guy, right? So if you're, if you have to, if you're playing like a scramble, you know, and you're oh, like, he's the guy you want. You're like, oh, we need one more guy. Uh, can we, uh, can we get this guy, yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah, what's he doing? Oh, he's. I, th- I think those are. He's taking the plastic off his clubs. Yeah. Oh, he's. Has he ever played before? It's yeah. Like that commercial. I'll take Barkley. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. That's right. That's right. That's okay. Right. That's right. right. The 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 other one. Have you? Do we talk about that? The one with Slash. Have no. you seen that commercial? No. Oh, so there's. Well, we'll talk about the commercial on TV. We'll talk about it. But it's it's the same. It's the same thing. But it's a it's a tryout for like the music for like the you know it's the, like the, the band. for the yeah. band right. And so there's all these like you know middle school kids, and then there's Slash playing Sweet Child of Mine, and they're like, <laughs> and the teacher's like, Yeah, you got it. And he's like, Great. <laughs> yeah, weird. And the kids are like this. Good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so uh, yeah, Tom's a ringer. Uh, he's right. he's probably what he's got. Right. He's probably got like a three, maybe two plus handicap, right? So you, if you're if you're like hanging around, if you're down at Framingham Country Club or something, you're like we need a fourth. We'll take that guy. Yeah, that's right. He's, he's not. Yeah. He's, he may, he's, wor- he's working everybody's plan. He may oh, keep us close yeah, to the uh, green. Yeah, well, why don't we, let's put a little bit of money in, make it interesting. <laughs> right? You know, this is he's like, this is <laughs> this is I, I, this golf thing seems he's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, this like, is I'm kind of new to this. All you know? I have is hundred dollar bills that my dad gave. Me. Is that, is that okay? Anybody? Yeah. Huh? Huh? All right. That sounds good. That sounds good. Let's try I love it. All right. I, love uh, it. I love a good pool hustle. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, hustled on the golf course. All right. So we were talking about uh, we, we entrepreneurship. We're talking about entrepreneurship, right? And, and yeah, and if you want to be a golf uh, hustler yep. or a pool hustler, t- talk to Tom, right. and he's no. we, we, we're, we're kind of setting. We're building his business plan for him right now. Um, so we're talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking about like starting a business and like, and we're using, we're using like the, the examples. We use the, the, the restaurant example. We use the, re- the example of the businesses that we've started. But, you know, everything that we talk about can apply to anything. It can, sure. can apply to any business. And, you know, I guess it all kind of starts with, you know, the re- the, why do you want to go into business for yourself? Like sure. why, what, what are the, what's going to be the benefits of you being able to go to go into business for yourself versus working for somebody else? And, you know, there's the obvious ones, right? There's the obvious ones is I get to be my own boss, right? right. And how, how, you know, and you've been your own boss now for a long time. I've essentially been my own boss for a long time. It's good. It's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of benefits to that, particularly when you're, you know, when you, you know, the, the time flexibility and your ability to kind of be able to, you know, manage things at home, be able to do things, you know, be able to kind of, you know, make your own schedule as opposed to having a commute where you have to commute, you know, every day into a into Well, it's a funny. I, so I never had a problem putting in the hours. The hours was never my issue. I would put them in differently, right? I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'm sure we've talked about this. I, I might be up at four o'clock and working from four until seven because I have some obligation that I have to do, whether it's a family obligation or something like that. And then those hours get made up someplace else, right? So yes, if you if, if you like the type of flexibility that working for yourself can provide for you, but you have to remember, right? No one's gonna tell you to do something. You gotta you Who's gotta that? you have, you have to be self that's to be a degree of self motivation there because it's also easy to say, well, I work for myself and, you know, 10 hours in Netflix, that's that's not bad. I can yeah. do that now because I know, know it's not how it works. Yeah, there, there's a high degree of self-motivation. Yes, yes. And, 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 you know, because what happens is, you know, you and I both know. So you and I, we're, we're, in, the, we're in the customer service business, right? So, you, so we have this ingrained thing, and I'm sure you have it as well. So if you have a, a customer that seems unsatisfied with yep. your service or seems upset with something you've done – that is that 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 hits a nerve, right? Yep. That hits a nerve, and that makes you kind of look. Or if you have a customer that leaves, right? Everybody, we've all had customers that are like, "Yep, uh, you know what? I I no longer want to. You know, I don't want right. to. I'm, I'm I'm going to somebody else. My uncle Billy is better at this than you are. Or blah blah blah. You know, so that strikes a nerve, and that makes you think. That makes you kind of look internally and be like, "Okay, what did I do? Like, how did I? Right. How could What's I have wrong? Avoided, What's what, what did I do wrong? Or what what can I do better?" And you know, and that's a that's a question that you'll ask. You, you know, if you're you know your your customer or your, your client will say, well, you know, what, what is it that, that, that caused you to leave? And well, when, when you work for a different organization where you're not in charge of every single thing that happens in the organization, you might not even ask those questions. No. Right? I you mean, when I worked at that small mutual fund company, people, cl- clients come in, clients come out. You know, you, All the you, time. You, you were given clients. You, clients were taken away from you. I mean, they weren't your clients. 
They were just people that you were servicing and taking care of. So if somebody left, you're like, eh, that's fine. Well, I'll get some, they'll, get, they'll give me somebody new next week. No big deal, right? That's what would happen. So, yeah. so your, your, your ownership of those types of things is different than when it's, if, if you set it up in such a way that your name is the name, then you feel differently about it. You yeah, have, it, has, it, has, it, it hurts. It, it has an impact. And that's where I, that's where I feel like kind of the that's the the genesis of the motivation. That's where that's where your motivation comes from. Is like you want to do a good job. You yeah. want to you know you want to you want your business to be successful. You want to kind of meet your goals that you've established for your business. But at the same time. You know, you want to. You want people. To, you know, if you're in the if you're in the customer service business, you want your clients to be happy, right? right. If you're in the if you're in the manufacturing business, you want people to, to say that your product is better than the competition's right. product. And, and, you, and you may have built a better mousetrap, right? For for, for 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 a particular niche, right? It doesn't you know? Again, we, we we joke about it all the time, and you're like, well, there's there's lots of lawyers out there, there's lots of investment people out there, there's lots of barbershops out there, there's lots of you know, there's lots of insurance the agents out there. There's you, lots, you just mentioned the big that's three. Right, that's yeah. right. That's, keeps the economy. <laughs> moving you know there's but there's lots of you know you have a lot of choices when it comes to buying pizza you have a lot of choices when it comes to going to a restaurant it comes but you know so so nobody has a monopoly on it right everybody's doing something a little bit different and everybody's connecting with people in a different way and sometimes you're a fit for you know business a and sometimes you're a better fit for business b right they're just they're just wired differently and mm -hmm. you need to make a connection with those people so if you're the entrepreneur you got to figure out what's what's my what's my value proposition in this space Right. So, the, and, and that's, so, so the first question you asked, and the first, and this is the question that you asked yourself when you're, you're like, why do I want to go into business for myself? Why do I, why do I want to do this? And then for, for whatever the answer, I want increased flexibility. I think I can do it better than, than everybody else. I think, I, I think my mousetrap and the, you know, whatever my mouse, you know, whatever my mousetrap is, and I'm putting air quotations on the radio because that works, right? right? Cause you yeah. guys see that, right? Yeah. Um, whatever my mousetrap, I, I think I can do it better. I think that because I can do it better, I, it may become more profitable for me. It may be, sure. it may be, put me in a, a better financial position than if I were to work for a company and or work for work for someone else and do the same thing for somebody else, right? So then, so then once you've kind of established, okay, and and I can do it, right? And I I I have the feasibility, I have the the framework, I have the system, I have the plan. Where I can do it, where I believe that I can do it, and sure. and so I, I want to do it. Here's the reasons why I want to do it, and I believe I can do it. Here's the reasons why I think I can do it, and and part of that we talked about in the previous segment is if you have somebody, if you have a kind of a, a role model or a or a guide or a mentor or somebody or even somebody that you don't know, but you you're you're emulating them, you're, right. you're you're following what they did, right? And that's not a bad thing, even if you're in the same space. Like if you think about it, if, if I'm a financial planner. And I want to start my own financial planning. I want to have my own firm, my own independent firm. Why wouldn't I look and see what other financial right. planners are doing? Why wouldn't I look at some of these other independents and say, how are they? How are they structured? And I learn about them, and I learn, and I learn what they did. And then, if I'm fortunate enough, if they'll talk to me, they'll, you know, again, depending upon, you know, kind of where we are from. If they're right next door, they're probably not going to be excited that another financial planning firm is coming. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, we've joked about this before. I mean, ideally. You find yourself in sort of a mentor group, if you will, with people who yeah, don't the, see don't see your success as a zero sum game. Where if you're successful, they're somehow unsuccessful, yeah. right? You know, and and yes. But then there's know. the guys that we and we've met these guys before. Well, yeah, we yeah we know guys who keep the curtain closed pretty tightly, and you know they're not going to let you know anything that's going on. It's everything's a big secret. If anything, there might even be a little misdirection just to. Uh, or they're awful, awful, awfully eager to find out what's behind your curtain. Hey, let's oh, let's get together. Absolutely, let's, right. let's sit down and meet. Yeah, yeah like, what are you doing? What are maybe you doing? Maybe we can help one another. Yeah, maybe yeah. you know, maybe we can work together. And you're like. How exactly are we going to work together if we are competing for the exact same yeah. clients in the exact same space? Yeah. So, and there are there are groups. <clears throat> you know, when you're when you're initially starting out on this journey, and you're looking at money, and you're looking at revenues, and you're sort of bootstrapping, you're you're getting your business off the ground. The the best thing you can do, I think you're you're a hundred percent right, is find a mentor who can guide you through the process because they will tell you things that you will otherwise spend 10 years learning how to not do sure. certain things. So learn from their mistakes, talk to them, be open, be honest, tell them you're looking for a mentor relationship. Most people in the business world, especially in the entrepreneurial sector, if you will, people who work for themselves, 
are happy to see somebody else do well. They remember their journey. They remember their trip to the bank, right, that I talked about earlier. And they're happy to see somebody do well. And, it's, and you know what? It'll, it'll, pay, it'll pay off in spades. It, it's, you'll, you'll make a great relationship professionally. They may do things that you, slightly, that, they, that you just don't do and that are slightly different from you. And it could be a very good opportunity both personally and professionally. So right. that's, I think that's key and critical to your success. Do you think that Steve Jobs and Bill Gates ever like kind of talked to each other and hung out on, you know, and like maybe went maybe went to like a conference to get like some kind of retreat escape together? Well, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates both said that having each other in the marketplace made both of their companies better. Absolutely. And you might even remember at one point Apple was on the brink of going under and Steve uh, and and, and Bill, Gates. Bill Gates wrote them a check for I think 150 million dollars. Yeah. And it was one of Bill, uh, one of one of Steve Jobs' greatest regrets was that Apple conference where he put uh, Bill Gates on a screen that was about 30 feet tall to kind of introduce this initiative that they were working on. But yeah, I mean, they knew each other. Mm-hmm. They had respect for each other. They yeah, knew what each other extreme, brought to the table. Right? Yeah. That's an extreme example. But you know, I, I mean, I, I could tell you from from my own perspective, I, I talk to all kinds of attorneys sure. locally. Some that do exactly what I do. Some that do things slightly different than what I do. And 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 for people who I have respect for, I, I have no problem talking to them about you know what's going on in my business and my practice and what the challenges I'm looking at. And and as long as I feel like they're sharing the same way, mm-hmm. I have no problem with that. You could pick up right away. If somebody's not really playing ball and, and, and feeling like it's only a one-way street. But for most people that you would want to interact with as a soon-to-be entrepreneur, th- they will share with you what's going on. Right. And and so the other, the other part, like kind of the next step, right? We said, so why do I want to go into business? Do I have the capability to go into business for sure. myself? And then the next question is, and, and, and almost like it's not even the next question. It's like the, it, it could be the first question, but it, it's kind of this ongoing thing is, is there a market, right? And yeah. that is, and I remember, for, so a million years ago, when I first was going to start my, my first, our first company, which was a, a leadership training company, and we had this, whoa, it was this great idea, we're going to do leader, you know, it was kind of coming out of the Army, we were going to do this outdoor leadership training, because that's sure. what we did in the Army, and, we, and I felt like we could really, really do this. The first question, and I, and I went to a mentor, I went to, and he talked to me, and he's like, the first thing you have to know is there a market for your business? Is, are there, do people want to do this? Right. You know, and it's, and the same thing, it's the same thing for an attorney. It's the same thing for a financial planner. It's the same thing for a restaurant. It's the same thing for, uh, if you're going to, if you're going to do some sort of like, yeah. like packaging and, and, and some delivery service. Is there a market? Am I going to be able to, to access this, access this market? Or do I, and, and then it, do I have to share this market with anybody? And you can do that research. You can do yeah. that research. You can say, look, you have to I, do that I research. want to, you know, I want to be in the, whatever the space is, right? And then you can back into it. And there's all kinds of research availability on the internet to sort of look at and say, is there a market for my services out there? Now, it could be a very small niche market and you want to kind of know that going in, or it could be a very broad based market that gives you obviously a wider uh, availability of, of potential clients, but yeah, that's what you got to figure out, right? Do people need what I'm selling? And oftentimes, you may be in, you know, you'll hear these stories about people going to business for themselves, where they're working for a company, right? And how many times has this happened? Not unlike you, right? Where you're working for a company and you you see it you, in yeah. your in your in your work for this company, like everybody needs everybody, and and oh by the way, they they're not. They're not pleased with the big firm. They're not pleased with sure. the fact that I have to call an 800 number and I'm going to talk to somebody different every single time if I have a question about whatever it is that I'm, but that I'm, my business is. And, and, and so you may, you as the, as the budding entrepreneur, you may say, you know what? I can do this de- differently. I can have a better mousetrap. I can, sure. I can, I can do this where, where I can sa- I can, I can solve the problems. I can satisfy these clients better than I, better than, than another than my contemporaries can or my my soon to be competitors will. Well, and we this we've definitely talked about on the show before, which was which is that with the way technology has advanced, it's very easy for you to have similar access to the things that your competitor might have, and you don't even realize how affordable things like that are. Right now, at first glance, you might say, "Look, you know, my, what, what's, what's your business? My business is a laptop and a cell phone." 
Not, not unusual, right? That's not an unusual thing, you know? Sometimes you say to yourself, all right, where do I go from here? Am I going to rent space right away? Am I not going to rent space right away? You didn't rent space right away. I didn't rent space right away. But eventually that made sense. So those things come with, you know, with your planning. And, but, but to your point, the mentor piece is important. Understanding do I, do what, I ha- do I wanna, do what I want to do? Is there a market for it? And then the other thing is got to put that plan together. Yeah. Yeah, like you're, and, and, you know, think about it. Think about it all the time, like for how many nickel, if you had a nickel for every time, like, oh, a business plan, and you got to do your business plan, everything's got this. And, and in some cases, you do need a formal business plan, especially if you're going to, if you're going to go borrow money, right? If you're, oh, gonna, yeah. like, so, so your business, let's say we'll go back to our restaurant example. So you're, you want to be, you want to own your own restaurant and you are going to borrow money from a bank or from a from a an, an lending institution in order to build your restaurant in yeah. order to in order to to make your restaurants restaurants don't just unless you're you know walking into a, a Domino's and that's what you know you bought a franchise and you're like I, I'll run this and you know everything's everything's already there most yeah, of the time but, but but Domino's corporate would do all that like they, like they would they would well, come to you and say yeah. as a franchisee what's your plan you know I mean they, they're not just going to let you go in and just say yeah here's the money here's the Domino stuff. Go figure it out. Oh, you're, exactly. you're going to go through training. Mm-hmm. You're going to go through how to run a business. You're going to go through the financials. You're going to go through all of and that. And the franchise piece is a little different because you have that kind of parent company that that you represent. That you you know your franchise represents. It, it is different, but the but the process is the same. Nope, doesn't it's, matter, right? right. You're gonna, if you if you decide you're going to be a franchisee, they're going to give you all the training, right? Mm-hmm. If you decide that you're just going to open up your shop, no franchise, your pizza place, you, right? Yeah. You have to get. You got to go find the training. For yourself, yeah, right, because they're not going to give it to you. So this, but this is where I'm, where where we talk about the plan. So you know, uh, you know, for for all of you who have like ever talked about or, or were interested in starting a business, there's always you know you kind of look up the end and it's, the first they say you need a business plan, and which you do, you absolutely need a business plan. Now, now does, does it need to be sixty pages? Right. Does it need to be no. the, right? Just like any, it's like your financial plan. Does it, does it need to be this long, drawn out, like complicated thing? Which which oh by the way, as soon as it hits paper. Things are going to change. There's going to need adjustments. There's going to be things that, 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 that don't apply anymore because or for whatever the reason is. So you need to have a great concept and you need to have like the fundamental, okay, where is my money going to come from? How am I, how is the business going to be structured? How are, you know, what is, what is the, what is our profit margin? Like when, you know, you have to kind of do those numbers and do them clearly. Right. If you are going to, like for our franchisee example, or if you're going to apply for a loan for a bank, a bank's going to say, "Oh no, we need to see a real plan. We need right. to see something that that has some that that that's not just on the back of a napkin where you say, oh yeah, this is what I think I want to do.' The you know the the the, the company that if a, if a bank's going to loan you money, if they're going to loan you a million dollars, there has to be they have to see what it is. They have to because now they're 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 in bed with you. They're part of your they're part of oh, your. They want to get their money back. That's right. If you don't succeed, they get their money. Back. That's right. So just like anything, just like a, when a bank loans, when when a bank you know loans money on a mortgage, they have the they have the ability they like do they, the underwriting. They have, they have the they lien on your, the house, right? They want to see your business plan. They, they, the want, the- they want to see what the financials look like from Marsden Incorporated. That's right. right. They're going to be able to pay this loan back. Yeah, and then on top of that, they're going to say, all right, well, we're going to give you some money. What are you putting into this? Because you're right. going to need to put some. You're going to have to have some skin in this game as well, and not just the you know the sweat the sweat labor or anything like that. They're you're going to need to come up with money you're going to, have to say all right well if the bank's going to loan you 70 percent of what it's going to cost to build out your restaurant guess who's putting the other 30 right. percent in you right. are and you know even if you think to yourself well i'm so worried about you know just making money like you know a, a lot of people become reluctant entrepreneurs right just wake up a day and guess what their hand is forced they're an entrepreneur okay so if you're thinking like this if you think that this is something on your radar screen then you have some time, right? Especially if you're working another full-time job and you think this is going to be a side hustle that turns into something down the road. You have time to do this. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have time to do this or you're unwilling to make the time to do this, well, that might tell you something. Because, you know, now you've got to think about, well, if this is too hard, a lot of things are going to be hard. And if you're not willing to spend some time on this to kind of get this thing launched the right way, then you've got to say to yourself, am I really serious about this? Yeah, is, this a, is this a hobby or is this a, is this a, is this a, a legitimate business? Right, and and then when you start talking about it, it's one thing if you're gonna you know if I'm gonna be a if I'm gonna be a folk singer and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna I'm gonna play some gigs in like some local restaurant and that's gonna be my side hustle, right? right. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of moving parts that I gotta make sure that my guitar is tuned, right? Yeah. And I gotta make, make sure, sure my, the gigs lined up. Make sure my amp yeah, and I and I and I know the places where I'm gonna go and I know what time I need to be there. Yeah. But if I'm running a restaurant, that's different. I have 
15 employees, right? I have, you could. I, I have I have people that work for me. I have I have a, a, a big rent check that I have to pay to the you know to the space that I I'm got running. a utility check. Yeah. I have an insurance check. I have to pay vendors. I have to pay licensing people. I got to do all kinds of stuff. Yep. There's 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 all these people that are kind of beholden to you, and you're beholden to them, right? right. You're beholden to you know we you know now in kind of post COVID the big supply chain issue that affects everybody, and if you're you're it could affect your business. Like, Absolutely right. I can't get my Brussels sprout salad, which is famous, you know, across all of oh, New England. Globally. Yep. Yeah, I, I can't get Brussels sprouts or I can't get them. I can't get them at a reasonable price. I can't get them at a price where I'm going to be able to make money off them because there's that whole piece of as a business, you have to be able to make money. Yeah. And whether you're a small one person shop or whether you, you know, whether you have a business that has a hundred employees, you have to, at the end of the day, the business has to make money. And if it's if it's a startup business, if you're right. just starting, then maybe it's not going to make money in year one, year two, or year three. But that plan that we talked about, sure. that plan needs to articulate very clearly that we were that by this date, by, and and it's a line in the sand. Yeah, when are we cash flow positive? By this date, we need to be cash flow positive. And if we aren't, then. We we go it's A B or C. We close the doors. We change the business plan, right. or we or we change the, the the entire model, or we or we fire half the you know, or, or we change we, we get change of, what we we're get doing. Out of the business. We, we, we get out on. of the business. Move on. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, we'll be back real quick in a break. We get one more break, and then I think we're we'll be hitting the. Uh, Hitting the, hitting the glass the ceiling. Hitting what, the glass ceiling. Well, we, the glass we have ceiling. to. Get, we have to now. Now, right now, we're talking about this. You feel like I got so much stuff I got to do. Right. <laughs> yeah, I've through this. I'm thinking do I have, myself. Do I have time to be doing this TV and radio show? <laughs> we do. We do. And there's a reason we we're do. Gonna, we part of our gonna, marketing plan. And we're going to talk about that when we come back. We'll be right back. And we're back. It's Monday coming. Law, My FM 101.3. Jay Mars in with the Martin once Law again. Group. John Droham in for financial. Tom's new, but we're sitting here. We're making. Uh, we're he's making. Up. We're making me very anxious <laughs> talking about all the things that you have to do as an entrepreneur. And now, as we're sitting here, my mind is reeling <laughs> with all the things that I have to get done. And I'm, you know, yeah, so, right. uh, we're going to wrap <laughs> I got this up as quickly as we can because I got to go do a bunch of stuff. <laughs> but um, we're talking about the importance of setting up your plan. We're talking about the importance of thinking like an entrepreneur, understanding why you want to get into the business. We're talking about doing some market research to figure out if actually anybody wants what you're doing, huh? what you're selling. Um, is the phone going to ring? And uh, we're talking about financing and knowing your numbers and the importance of understanding that, you know, you have to have a plan because if your plan gets off the rails, you kind of want to be able to analyze, uh, do an analysis of that and say, what does off the rails look like? You're about to say analyze. I was and, I, and, analyze. I, and, I, and I know that's not a real word, but I know exactly what you're talking about. We do a lot of analyzing at the law firm. I didn't get my third cup of coffee today. So I'm <laughs> What's red my analyzation? Jay, we've done this analyzation on this. You want to take a look at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's what we're talking about. So we're talking about sort of the, the path to entrepreneurship. Right. So we and 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 so the kind of the next step, right? So if you kind of once you have your business established and when it's it's built, like right, it's like kind of that whole like you know is field the door of dreams. Open? Is the door open? The, the, the door is. Well, it's not quite it's about open. to be open. It's, not, it's about to be open, but 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 this is the thing, right? We talked about you know you have to know that there's a market out yes. there, right? Yep. But but there might be a market out there, but do they know do that they know you're you? there? <laughs> and that do they know you're is, in the market. Yeah. And that is that probably are. Arguably, could be one of the one of the fundamental things about business that that there's no there's absolutely no no arguing about is the ability that you have to be able to reach your market. You have to they have to know that you're there. You have to be able to advertise. You have to be able to people need to know or organizations customers need to know that you're and, there. And, and this doesn't have to involve spending tons of money. Nope. Right. This is the first thing that we always try to, when we're thinking about this, and the first advice that your mentor might give you, which is, you know, marketing, because everybody wants to go right for the sexy stuff, right? They want to mm -hmm. go right to the online, web-based, PPC, SEO, let's spend $5,000 a month. on it. It, it does not have to be that at all. You can accomplish a ton of marketing with an email and a phone call. Yep. And that's, and that's in many cases, that's how you start it. Yeah. You mail a flyer, you send some emails, you talk to your natural marketplace and tell people what you're doing and you let them help push out your message. Yeah, you're exactly right. And But the thing about marketing and the thing about it, whether you're going to spend, a, 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 whether, you, whether your business requires you or your business plan requires you to spend money on marketing. I mean, so, you know, look at like the tobacco companies, look at... Uh, 
Look at car. Look at the the car industry. Think about the amount of money that gets spent on marketing for that. For I mean, you watch TV at night. What do you see? You see five different oh, car commercials. Blitz of that's right. Uh, of that's right. And and right. there's and there is a there is a hard fundamental science behind all of that. That they 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 know what they're doing. Yes, but at the same time, think about your local marketplace, right? Think about your local downtown business area. Think about the people that are around you, and think about how many of those people are in business, and you've never seen a Super Bowl no, no. ad for those places. I, I understand that. And, and my point is, is, that, is that depending upon what business you're in, depending sure. on what your plan is, your business may require that kind of, mar- may, may require that kind of marketing, may require that kind of, of commitment. Sure. It, it could. I'm not, and, I, and I'm saying, so if I, so if I buy a, a Toyota, if I buy a Toyota dealership, right, right and, and, and a franchise dealership, I may, ha- I may have to do that, right? I may have to... Well, that's, di- well, that's different. You're buying a dealership, that's... Yeah, that's right. That so, goes back to this franchise idea that right, my, there's, a, there's a national marketing campaign yeah, my, that happens way above you. Yeah, my, my point isn't, isn't that... Uh, my point is that depending, whatever, my, whatever my business plan is, I have to do marketing, whether it's something where I have to spend a lot of money sure. on it yes. or whether it's something I don't spend a lot of money on. Either way, I'm going to... The activity I, has to happen. Either way, I'm committed to it. Correct. I'm committed to it, and you said it. It's ongoing. It's never-ending. It never stops. There's, you're never not looking for clients. You're never not trying to grow. That's right. You're never not trying to like expand the word, to, to spread the word about what you do. And Back to our restaurant example. So the first thing I need to do, as a, if I'm a restaurant owner, is I need to have good food. I need to have good service yep. because where, what is what is one of my primary marketing avenues going to be? What, well, when, when you, what, oh, that's right. You go, off. you eat at my restaurant, and you say that was awesome. That was delicious. That beer was. I love that you have Jack's Abbey beer on tap. Jack's Abbey. He's no, not a sponsor. He could be a sponsor. He's. I mean, he's he, welcome to be a sponsor. He's, we should bring him on. He'd love to come and talk on. He's a. He's. He's. A, he's got a face for radio. I and bet he does. All right, but. Yeah, so so you, you say I, I have a great product and you and what do you do? You say that was a great product. Guess what? I'm coming back here and I'm gonna tell my friends. Well, best best back marketing, back. best referral we ever get, right? Warm referral. Somebody yep. says, Hey, you know what? Where'd you go you, what'd you guys do this weekend? We went to so and so. Soon as you tell somebody what a great experience we had, it's gonna be in there rattling around for a while and at some point they're gonna say we should go there. Yeah, and depending upon what your business is, that may be the that may be the best way. That may be the that may be the primary way where you where you gain clients. And for guys like you and me, when we first started, sure. that's how and that's how it is Look, right that, now. That that may be that that method of marketing that that costs not a lot, other than making sure that people tell your story if they enjoyed it and they get the experience that they expect. That may be enough for you just to get the doors open mm-hmm. and for you to pay your staff, you know, because there's going to be a baseline, right? When you're going through your marketing plan, there's going to be a, this is how much money we need to make just to keep the lights on and keep people coming in. Right, so I'm not in the red. That's right. And, and that level of, 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 of accomplishment could come from just that word of mouth marketing that that gets you to, okay, we, we, can, we can not take our foot off the gas, but we've kind of working on that. Now, now, we can do, now we can move on to some other aspect of marketing. Now maybe we do a television ad. Now maybe we do a TV ad. Now maybe we try to get somebody in here, phantom gourmet type stuff, where somebody's going to come in and talk about us. And then you start to get into these other channels of marketing that would then help drive more business sure. above and beyond that baseline. Your baseline alone could be accomplished just by location, 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 and word of mouth. And then how do we build on top of that? Yeah, and then and then there's all and then and then there's all the creativity things, right? The, the things you well, we run this special on this right. night. Yep. We we have on on uh, you know there's a there's an event that happens like for this for this holiday or things like that. Sure. And, and and again, everything is driven by the fact that you your product is good. Your, whether it's a service, whether it's food, whether it's a, a something you're manufacturing, that your product is good and you believe in your product and. Because you believe in your product, because again, that's the other thing, is when you're, when you're an entrepreneur, you know what you are, are also for your firm or for your company or for your restaurant? You're the lead sales guy. You are the yeah, lead sales you guy. You are in charge of sales. Even if you have somebody, like for, like for this radio station, right? right? They have a salesperson, right? Yes. But Tom McAuliffe is the lead sales guy. Oh, yeah. He's, he's always selling. He lives his, it, breeds it, right? And, ABC, and, always be selling, always that, be closing. And that's, yes. and that's what it, and, and so you, you, you're, because you have this pro, because of what you, you do what you do. Right. Because, and because you believe in what you do, that enables you to say, okay, I, wherever my market is, I find my market in whatever means of marketing or advertising I do. But at all the time, 
what we do, you need to come to our restaurant. Right. You need to listen to our radio station. You need to advertise with our radio station. You need to do your estate plan with Marsden Law because th- because we feel like we are better. Th- we we are we differentiate ourselves from the rest of the competition. Yeah. We feel like we, we feel like we have a better approach, right? We feel like a better approach. Now, our approach not, might not be for you. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. That's what we're trying to figure out. And then from there, you decide. You make your decision. This is the way you want to go. Just like anybody. But people get to know you're out there. That's what the marketing piece is. People yep. know you're out there. You find them. You get the at bats. They got to know for. you're out there. And you alluded to a little bit. Like if you're kind of like you, you happenstance, you fall into kind of this entrepreneur thing. You, you know, you got to want it. You got to want it, and you have to believe in it. And yeah. you have to want it, and you have to believe in it more than anybody else. And you talk to any successful, successful entrepreneur, anybody who started a business, anybody from a, a small one-man shop to a, a global conglomerate. It's because they believed in it more than anybody else. Well, go back and look, go back and look, and we only have another minute or two, but go back and look at the origin stories of any of these companies. Yep. They all started this way. Right, yep. Nike would, Nike did not just grow up one day and wake up as a giant behemoth. Right, there's some guy decided. I think I can make a better sneaker. Mm-hmm. Right, and guess what? Some other deci- some other guy at New Balance decided the same thing, and some guy at Brooks decided the same exact thing. And those guys all come up with their companies. Yep. And Coca Cola, right? That story about the guy and the formula and the selling of the formula, and then here it is. Here you are now. You're now you're Coca Cola, and then Pepsi decides, hey, we're going to get in on that. We yeah. think we, there's we think, a big market. We think right? we have a slightly better mousetrap, yeah. right? And guess what? So did Dr Pepper, right? Yeah. And they're a completely different animal, right? And they're doing their thing. So the, the, the if you are thinking entrepreneurially. Go back and look at some of the stories of these companies. I find them fascinating. You know, Richard Branson, Virgin Galactic, all his pieces. He started off by writing a, a, a magazine hmm. when he was 15 years old, right? And that turned into, so these stories, Bill Gates, I'm leaving Harvard to start this DOS thing. Isn't working out for me. I'm going to hmm. do this Windows thing. What are you talking about? The, 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 the Jobs know. Wozniak story, right? We're in the garage <laughs> making, yeah. you know, these stories are fascinating. And I think that that kind of prepares you for the idea that, you know, not everybody just gets there. Yeah. And I think you need to I think you need to build that into your own personal journey because that helps you kind of frame it and say, you know, we all start with one, you know, one step at a time. And then and then when you get there, when you actually start that business, it's gonna help you sell it. Because if yeah. you believe in it, then that's if you your don't believe in it. Believe in yeah, if you don't believe in it, then no your customers aren't gonna. All right, so we're gonna wrap it up. Wrap there. it up, wrap all it right. up. I gotta go back so, to work. I'm right, an entrepreneur. Sure. Well, we right? have, we have things to do. Two entrepreneurs that need to get back and start <laughs> doing some entrepreneuring. All right. Thank you for joining us on Money in the Law, my FM one oh one point three, Hollis and Cable Access TV. Uh, Jay Marsden, he's from the Marsden Law Group. I'm John Joan. We'll see everybody next Saturday. Next Saturday, next we will. Sa- don't miss it. Don't, Enjoy. Do not miss. Have a great weekend. Right, bye. See you.